So on this week's episode of Be More Super, the podcast, we've got a great guest, courtesy of Cool Waters Productions. It's a wonderful David Menken. David, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I can't believe what you've created here. I mean, I've I've got my little Luke with me here, but uh, you've got him as part of the podcast. Uh, you spoil me. Oh, Brian. Oh, well, you know what? You spoil me by coming onto the show, sir. And uh, before we talk about your wonderful career, uh, the last two years have been quite unusual. Uh, it's been quite challenging, uh, definitely for the entertainment uh, industry. Um, how have you kept positive and how have you kept moving forwards over the last two years during this this pandemic? I have been a very lucky workaholic. Um, within a couple of uh, within a couple of days of lockdown, I live in London, by the way. So, um, so I uh, had a chat with my agents, and we uh, made sure that I reached out to people who know about uh, sound booths and microphones. And within four days, I was up and running in a makeshift studio at home. I recorded an entire game underneath what really was a clothes dryer uh, mm -hmm. with some <clears throat> blankets and stuff. And then um, I actually, some of the, the filming work that I was set up to work on, um, they managed to make it work. I have had sticks up my nose more times than I can imagine anyone would want that. that I mean, who wants that? But no, uh, <laughs> no. But yeah, I have been uh, super lucky, uh, even though I was stuck inside like everyone else for a lot of it, um, I still went to work. And by the end, by uh, November of uh, 2020, I had bought this booth that I have in my flat now. And um, so I was able to um, record a lot of stuff from there. Um, and that's, I suppose, the beauty of your profession that you yeah. don't necessarily have to be on set. You can actually do it from home, from the comfort of your home, which is great. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned that you're in London now, and obviously you're not originally from London. Um, no. So you're from the Netherlands. Am I right in saying that? No, no. Uh, <laughs> nice. That's first time I've heard that one. Uh, so I am Norwegian American. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so um, <clears throat> I had a friend for so many years, and one day I asked him what part of Canada he was from, and he wasn't. Yep. He was American, and yep. it was like the worst thing I could have said to him. So I it's, do apologize. So what I, actually? I like the Dutch. It's fine. <laughs> so what actually brought you over to the UK now? Being uh, your home. So my dad worked in oil, so we moved around the world. Uh, my dad's from the States, my mother's Norwegian, and uh, we lived in Africa, we've lived in New York. Um, but when I was 10 years old, we moved to Surrey, just outside London, and I went to an American school there. And um, I uh, became what's known as a third culture kid, which is uh, people who <clears throat> sort of can be dropped into any kind of situation around the world. Um, and uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it sort of shaped me. Mm. I w then studied in New York, uh, ran out of money, as you do in New York, <laughs> and then came back here and finished. And then I found out that I can be unique here. I can be an American and I can be a Scandinavian. And I work as, uh, as both. Um, I don't touch anything British for the most part. Uh, there are enough people here who do really, really good work, but uh, stay away from my American jobs, stay away <laughs> from my Scandinavian jobs. <laughs> do you know what? Is do you know what? There's so 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 many British people now that are going over to the states, uh, being in shows and everything like that. And they're, they're so doing, good. They do an awesome accent. I mean, yes, just, but just, yeah, I will say this. I remember that there was a show here in the UK where people complained because the lead character was supposed to be from North Liverpool and the actress was from South Liverpool. And uh, there is a snobbery in this country. Excuse me, hay fever. Um, <laughs> there's a, a snobbery in this country when it comes to accents. And as I've said to my British colleagues, 
if Americans were in any way as picky about accents, none of you would be working. And um, because they all come over and they do amazing, amazing work. So uh, I, I just don't. I every time I've I've tried to do anything here, I just sound like Julie Andrews on acid, and uh, it just doesn't work. So I just stay away from it. That could work for something. I'm sure yeah, Julie I Andrews sh- on acid would be absolutely marvelous. <laughs> and I do a mean a sort of only ways Essex as well, but that's about it. Oh dear, oh dear. But yeah. I suppose you've got to play to your strengths, and, and it's, ob- it's obviously who knew working. who knew I had that strength. But there we are. <laughs> So, so how did the profession, uh, how, how did this industry start for you? I mean, can you remember your first audition and how did it go? My first uh, film audition coming out of drama school here uh, was for a film by Mike Nichols starring Emma Thompson called Wit, based on a stage play um, about a lovely and light um subject uh, being someone dying of stage 4c ovarian cancer um it was dark and heavy and uh and i got my first job i played one of emma thompson's students in it and i loved it um and then uh I thought, oh, this is the way it's going to be. <laughs> and of course, no. Um, no. I then, I trained in musical theater, believe it or not. So I started doing musicals. Uh, and and then around that time, I also started working for a Norwegian TV ch- uh, channel that that broadcast from here. So I kept my Norwegian up to date. And, um, and that's how I sort of got into, I started um, speaking in between programs for them. And that's how I found voiceovers. And then I launched um, the Norwegian ch- uh, version of uh, Fox Kids. And, uh, and that's when I sort of went, oh, animation. Ooh. And somehow some lovely agents took a chance on me and, um, and I went from there. A lot of rejection, but mm. uh, I've also been super lucky. Mm. Well, obviously, from your IMDb, you're very, very busy, which is obviously a testament to your chal- um, talent, sir. So, so Thank I've you. got to say, um, you know, um, as a voice actor and as as an actor, I know, I've I've noticed that on your IMDb, it's quite shared out. But you know, you have starred with quite a few big names, Tom Hanks being one of them. Um, yeah. And I've got a wonderful. Um, let's put that one up. There we go. Nice wide shot. And I'm, I, I feel really bad. I haven't seen this movie. And for some you know reason... What? So many people haven't. I think I should. And it's those movies that I think <clears throat> don't get you know, pushed out enough, which are often the best movies. I mean, yeah. what, what was it like working with, with someone like Tom Hanks and Ben uh, Wisman, is it? Uh, Wishaw. Ben Wishaw, with, yeah. Wishaw. Uh, that, that's Q from uh, Good Old Bond. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. What 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 was that like sharing a screen with with such a a screen legend? Um, was it, you know, good? It was awful. No, no. <laughs> yeah, it, it was, was a diva. <laughs> it was, yeah. And that well, I know. I will tell the truth here. Uh, it was one of the most amazing ex- working experiences of my life. I got to go to um, a, the desert in the middle of Morocco and spend weeks upon weeks working with Tom Hanks and Tom Tickver, who directed me. Um, He, um, you might know him from Run Lola Run and Cloud Atlas, and he worked on Matrix Resurrections as well. Um, He's an amazing director, but the thing was that every day was a masterclass with uh, Tom Hanks. He's, and the thing is that he's so generous with his time and uh, making you feel comfortable and what you what you see is what you get with him. Um, I don't understand how he has such boundless amounts of energy to um, um, to sit and make sure that people feel good in his presence. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's my my friends Christine, Megan, and I. We became very good friends on this. Um, he was awesome. That's all I can say, really. And um, uh, the film's on Netflix, I think. So hopefully we can yeah. get a little bit of a uptick. 
Yeah. That is it. If it's on net, Netflix, it's on tonight. I, 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 I promise you that, and then I'll even do a, a lovely review on it. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, you've also shared the screen with with quite other big, big, big names. Um, Hugh Hugh Grant being one one of them as well. Yeah. Uh, Hugh Grant and, and Meryl Streep and Florence uh, Foster Jenkins. This is another movie that this is what I like about interviewing guests is that I often overlook some films and the one with Mer Mer Meryl Streep in is about a woman that that's tried to be a um, opera singer th that wasn't very, very very good if I'm right she was say. tone deaf completely yeah. tone deaf yeah which is like a lot of my friends um <laughs> but you see I did performing arts at college and a lot of my friends um they thought they could sing and they were tone deaf but ah. you had you had to be the honest person and say look you know maybe not but but no it, it's it's great to see films like this that 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 you know may have got overlooked that you know could yeah. be a cool classic but Meryl Streep as well that must have been awesome because she is I mean Death Becomes Her and and all the other legendary yeah. films is just amazing yeah she I remember the first day her coming in and her rose tinted glasses and uh <laughs> And I went, that's a really good way to look at the world. And I realized that 1,700 other people had probably said exactly the same thing. But uh, but she smiled and she she was really sweet about it. <laughs> I thought you were uh, going to say yeah. rose tint, uh, tint, tinted glasses and a martini in, in a hand <laughs> as she walks in. Because yes. that's what I could imagine her doing. <laughs> now, she, was, uh, she had to come in on our first day and pretty much sing... Um, all the songs that she has to sing badly. And the thing is, Meryl Streep is actually a really good singer. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it was, and um, Stephen Frears just s sort of said, yeah, you're gonna sing it. And, uh, and she went, what? And, uh, and, and she just started and it was amazing. So I had a, you know, a, a personal performance. It was amazing. And if you had to choose between acting on screen oh, no. and voice yeah. work, which one would it be if you had to make a choice? Oh, shit, Brian. <laughs> um, oh, I love them both. They're so different. The, the, only, the only difference is sort of ease. It's the fact that when it comes to doing voice work, I can, I can turn up. Um, I don't have to shower. Uh, I can be anyone and anything. I don't have to go through makeup. I don't have to do any of that stuff in order to become a vibrant, uh, unique character. When it comes to my work on screen, it usually involves me being cast because I look like this and because I sound like this. Um, they don't want me to go completely overboard because because a lot of uh, a lot of the parts that I play in it's it's about it's about creating the truthful scenario around the lead character mm. i'm not you know and and when it comes to my voice work i've i've played a hell of a lot of leads but um uh, but the thing is that that going on set and being part of that world is magic um and the the magic that we have when we do games and <clears throat> and cartoons and animation is that the magic happens at the very end mm -hmm. so i get to i get to experience it um i don't you know i don't know what it's going to look like until the very end when i'm on screen i'm I, i'm pretty much sure of what i'm doing unless i'm working on a blue screen or a green screen so mm -hmm. oh man i almost got away with not answering didn't i but uh yes yeah. yes you did but let's move on to the next question um oh, what okay. makes what makes for a successful voice actor um <clears throat> somebody asked me this when when i posted about uh being luke uh someone said you know what is it because i'm i'm trying to and and i was like well uh number one be unique if you can't be unique be versatile if you can't be versatile, be the best person who turns up to do the job. Mm. Um, if you can't be any of those, 
have a lot of money or be the child of someone who has a lot of money and can pay for you to be involved in it. Um, no, I didn't say that last bit, but I, um, but I do really think that, that, um, being, being something different, being something that not a lot of other people can, can bring to the table. That's the important thing. And if you can't do that, then be someone who they can go, Oh shit, we don't know who, who to get for this. Well, 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 if we get David and we know that he can do this, 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 and this, that that's helped me out a few times and and then also be someone that people wants to work with people want to work with uh again um hopefully i haven't pissed off too many people i'm sorry i don't know if we can swear here but um but <laughs> oh thank you um but uh i have been asked back to work with people and that's mm. that's lovely uh because i i enjoy this and I hope that they enjoy me being a part of it. And how competitive would you say the voice industry is? Ooh. Well, it is because we're all we're all fighting for a very small amount of of jobs. Hmm. We um know that there is a lot of so, you know, there's especially in in, in animation, there's two tiers. There's the celebrity tier where they're hired because they're a draw for it. And then under that, there's the people who work in this industry. I count myself to be one of those. And <clears throat> there's always going to be someone that does it better than me, but all the things that I spoke of previously, you know, the, earlier, they, all those might come together to make me the, the person that, that people want to bring in for the job. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we are quite supportive in this, uh, in this industry. I think we, um, I am very open to giving tips, tricks, helping people with their reels when they're starting out. Um, um, I usually insist that they have to be talented. Uh, <laughs> um, it, when it comes to, um, uh, comes to me, I, I'm not, I'm not scared of people coming into this industry and, and, and doing well, because all that does is it keeps me hungry. It doesn't make me competitive, but it makes me, uh, make sure that I am doing my research, that I'm doing the work that I am, uh, on time, that I'm a nice person to work with all of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I'm desperately trying not to be a diva. <laughs> but it's okay to be a diva every now and again it really is but, absolutely uh, i call it narcissism light hmm. yeah yeah i mean would you say the industry's fair because your comment before regarding people money and you know people i mean is it a case of you, you often find that it's the people that you know that get you through the doors or, or is the industry quite fair in the way that if someone was star starting out you know they could get that opportunity well i mean <clears throat> serious talk um if you are a young british voiceover artist uh, in the uk then it's going to be harder for you to be seen just like if you're an american voiceover artist in the us if you are unique it means that <clears throat> at some point someone is going to need you Someone's going to need someone like you. And if there's a small pool of you, and then you're good at what you do, then chances are that you'll get hired. Mm. Um, and that's the thing. That's why I, I love working here because I am an American in the UK. I'm a Scandinavian in the UK. I'm a European in the UK. Um, I'm different. There's not, there's not as many of me here. Mm. And, and that's what it is. I, I don't, I don't think that that someone is going to get their dad to pay for them to make an entire animated project, you know, around them. Because what you need is you need a lot of talent and a lot of different different areas. Being the voice actor is just one of them, and you might get one shot at it if 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 there's nepotism involved. But if you're not good, why would people want to hire you again? Why would they want to bring everything else down? Mm. that's that's my opinion 
Anyway, yeah, no, I'm probably going to get in trouble with somebody about that. But I don't care. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, I mean, when <laughs> when starting out with the voice voice work, did you make any mistakes? Did you fluff up a lot? You know, oh, all the time, absolutely, um, because because there were rules, and you don't learn about the rules until until you are faced with them. Um, I took an entire TV channel off air because I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> so th I'd call that a, that a mistake. Uh, and that was pretty early. And I, I thought it was the end of the world. And then I was taken in by the boss and they were like, don't do that again. But it is just TV. And what's amazing about TV is that when things go wrong and if we can fix it quickly, you get people's attention and they stay. So if you, if she was like, you did it right, you went on air and then she played me the tape of me, my voice was sitting up here because I was so nervous. And I was explaining that we had some technical difficulties so we'll be back in a moment. And then my colleagues who knew what they were doing fixed it. They were amazing with me, but I learned very, very quickly that I needed more technical training in the room that I was working in because I accidentally took us off air. Um, wow. So yeah, yeah, I've made some big old mistakes. <laughs> I've, I, you know, I've inadvertently pissed people off um, and then tried to make it better. But then having an American accent really, you know, really pissed, the, uh, made it worse. So um so yeah, I've I've screwed up left, right, and center, but uh, but but hopefully I think the good has outweighed the bad. And that's how people learn making mistakes. There's nothing wrong wrong with it Absolutely. as long as no one got hurt, you know. And cop to it. That's my other one. People are so afraid of of. I mean, look at the politicians uh, who just refuse to say, "Yeah, what I did was wrong," um, and. In my industry, it just doesn't fly. Mm. Just hold your hand up and be like, I messed up because I didn't know. Mm. Mm. So. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the first one to put my hands up because, you know, it shows the uh, integrity, I think. And as you Absolutely. say, the, po the politicians definitely need to learn a bit of that at the moment. But um, yeah. so, you know, during the pandemic, um, you know, did you notice a massive surge in all these actors trying their hand oh, at voice work and yeah. how dare they try and take <clears throat> your work um you know i mean what's your thoughts on that because obviously it's one one thing being an actor but then i can imagine it's quite hard hard work as well being a voice actor because it's a completely different yeah. plane and what i did was i told them the truth so i made it very clear that there was there's there's a lot of there's a lot of money that you need to invest up front and if the work is not coming in right away you need to think is do i need to feed my family do i need to make sure that i am paying my rent first of all because it's not it's you know just like with any kind of startup you're not going to be making money right away if people don't know you exist in that sphere so I, um, I was really ruthless with them. And I was like, listen, you know, if you're going to have to buy a mic and an interface and, and you're going to have to create a booth where sound from outside doesn't come in and your sound in that space sounds good, that all costs a lot of money. And then you, you're going to have to have um, a showreel showing off your work. Mm. It's all of that is really expensive. And um, so by the end, I sort of had a, a template that, I, that I, I wrote out, I got together. I also sent them to some companies that actually um, help people get started in the industry. Mm. I gave them some options. I was like, there's probably a two-week trial. There always is. Um, and, and I said, when you have done that, then we can do a Zoom. And we can talk about the, what I think you'd be right for and what you you should do and so on. And what happened was that 75% of them didn't get back to me. 
because they went off and did the research or it became overwhelming and they went on to do other things. Mm. Because everyone thinks that this that I do in my booth is easy. Somehow, somehow someone has 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 the idea that recording voices for a game or animation or an audiobook or a corporate or a promo or a commercial that it's easy that we just sit there and we just read it through once it's not the case it's really technical mm. and and the human voice you know as you're talking the pauses and the, the pitch and everything it's an artwork in itself i mean i i would love to do voice work but the problem is I've suffered from a stutter for many, many years. And I had speech therapy for like seven, eight years for a stutter. So when I was younger, literally I couldn't get a sentence out. And I actually went into performing arts because I found that when I was reading a script or singing a song, the stutter went away. But now it comes back. You know, if I get nervous or excited yeah. and or certain words like beginning with CH, I can't actually say them without stopping breathing and thinking um but yeah i would love one day to 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 have to have a go or even learn not even to have a go but to improve myself and my ability and you know i i, I like to try things you know for my own you know self if that makes any well, sense well let's well, after we finish here, let's have a chat about that kind of stuff because you've got a great voice. Um, I, I am, you know, my job is to is to listen and examine voices, mm. other people's voices. I had no idea that you had a stutter. Um, uh, you have um, you you're not doing any of the sing song stuff that people usually have as their part of their training, especially around our age uh, for that mm. kind of stuff. So really, really impressive. You've clearly done mm. a hell of a lot of work. But but the thing is that in our industry, there are we do have, you know, Benedict Cumberbatch can't sing can't say penguin. He says penguin. Uh this is from Graham Norton. And um, you know, this was and it turned into a brain meltdown moment for him. You you completely understand that. Everyone has a thing that messes with them mm. but what we have when we have technique is that we learn tricks to get through it yes. and to to move around it and of course someone um if you know i'm guessing that when you were a teenager you had loads and loads of tips and tricks for yourself to get around so that people wouldn't wouldn't catch you out and um well, you were probably really it was, cool it would no um I, I I got bullied. Um, I was huh. as as wide uh, as I was tall, and I stuttered. I was like a bully's dream, you know. I was like <clears throat> the Brad Pitt of victims for bullies, you know. Oh. It was. But do you know what? It's made me the man I am today, and it's made me Same. be a better dad to my girls, um, and it's made me appreciate appreciate you know connection. Um, yeah. Because I went through all that thing of the breathing techniques and and and, um, and taking a breath every time you're going to say a word, um, but yeah, it's astonishing. It really is to not be able to communicate and actually say what you want to say, and it's just odd. It really, really is. But let's talk about Star Wars because let's. Star Wars is one of my all-time favorite movies um, especially the originals um, go, go, going back my wife's great auntie was actually in Star Wars which was pretty cool um, yeah it's who right so uh, you know in the <laughs> cantina scene yes um, there was a character that had a head that was shaped like a bat so so literally my wife's great auntie was like something like three foot nine inches tall she okay. she was perfect like body wise she's just small um and she shared the part with a gentleman called rusty coffee that was also he was in willy wonka and everything like that and it took about three years of being married to my wife for her to mention it <laughs> 
and literally i couldn't believe it she was in star wars and apparently she got paid with costume and props from the movie and i was like are they still around <laughs> but no they all got sold off uh, oh. but but yeah star wars it's it's one one of those franchises that will never go away and then you've got yeah. lego which is every parent's nightmare uh, to walk over but every mm-hmm. kid's dream to play because it is such a good game and you play i'm going to play the trailer as as we talk about the the actual project so how did this project come about for you um you know audition wise well um believe it or not this happened back in 2018 um i uh i've worked with the the studio um where um where it was recorded i've worked with them before i have a good relationship with them and i wasn't called in in the first group for this but friends of mine were and they explained what was going on and i did something that i'd never done before and i i went i think you need to see me for this i think i can do it and and they were like all right big shot (laughs) fine come on in show us what you got so i prepared everything i had um i had clips ready for me um on my ipad i had clips on my phone that i could have in my ear if i needed to and then um i came in and i i auditioned and i was with friends i guess because i'd worked with all the people in the room so i'd worked with with the voice director i'd worked with the engineers before so i felt pretty comfortable messing up and um and yeah they uh they came back and they said they said that um i was uh, I've, I've spoken to the to the sound engineer and he he said that it's like you you were really prepared you you were ready for that job and somehow i got approved by you know um by the californians and uh and the floridians and the danes mm. um and uh and it it just happened uh and suddenly i was in the room and i was saying these ridiculously iconic lines and um for about 15 minutes i just sort of i, I was elated and then i realized what had got myself into <laughs> i realized that this is the fandom this is the fandom this um right here and this is you're messing with people's childhoods i'd come across something like this with thunderbirds when i when i did that i did a reboot of thunderbirds called thunderbirds or go um and i've never had so many you know don't fuck it up moments um as i have when i was there because uh, people were sort of saying to me this is you are messing with my childhood if you if you if you do this wrong now i got to interpret my own characters for that for gordon and virgil but for luke i had to be luke i couldn't be anybody else i'm not an impersonator i'm not some i'm not a human jukebox there are mm. people out there who can hear someone and then they can just do it they just have that ability that's not me i'm an actor so i had to approach it approach it like that and um it was scary i won't lie <laughs> and how 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 secretive was the project because i know that you can announce it straight away so i mean how you know with the ndas was it was was it quite under wraps for quite a while because 2018 and it's just yeah. come out now i mean that must, i haven't must, been able to be tell a, a single person i wasn't able to talk about it with anyone um it was it it, it was it was so ridiculous because because all you want to do is tell someone you're over at someone's house and they're you know they're watching the movie they have the movie on in the background while they're eating dinner because it's just part of their lives and um i have a colleague richard he is he is the biggest star wars fan ever and i couldn't tell him and 
I had a chance while I was recording. I went to San Francisco and I got to go to the the offices in in San Francisco right by the Golden Gate Bridge and I went there and somehow they let me go in to the foyer so I got to stand and take pictures next to RTD2. <laughs> and I wanted just to go I I belong I belong here. I'm allowed I'm allowed to be here. I'm Lou. Um, and uh, and they uh, and you know I wasn't able to. I I signed I signed NDAs that were worldwide that were country specific, um, because this is a big deal. Mm. And yeah, I wasn't you know I wasn't able to say that I was that I was allowed to say that I was in the game on on the day it was released, but I wasn't actually allowed to say that I was Luke Skywalker until two days later. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And, and and does this mean that if they went on to make, you know, movies, Lego movies um, from from the game, would that necessarily mean that you could potentially be Luke in those games? It's a good in, question. In those films, sorry. There is there is um, there is nothing in my contract that says that I have any kind of ownership, that I am anything or anyone that deserves to do any more than this. So I am very, very happy with this. I would not say no. Uh, I would be, I would be very, very happy to, um, to do more, but that's not my job. That's, that's not, that's, I'm not the one who makes those decisions. Um, I'm kind of glad that I don't have to make those decisions. Um, and of course, the other thing is that, that it's, I you know we we've had we've had new new Luke in the Mandalorian and in Boba Fett and you know there's there's a lot of stuff swirling around that where do we let do we let the computers and the AI take over mm. do we let them do it so that people can still feel that it's them and it's completely authentic or do we allow someone to to imbue a little bit of themselves in something mm. um and my really long-winded answer is is that of course of course i would be up for more uh but uh but that's not my decision to make well fingers crossed it just makes sense you <laughs> yeah, know sure. it just makes Toes sense. crossed and everything they've already got your number you know what i mean they can just give you a call i've um, someone's approved me there's a tick next to my name there you go there you go so one thing that always fascinates me is that the process of actually doing the voice to the an the animation so yeah. is it a case of you doing the voice in the you know you've got your script and you're doing it in the way that they're asking you to do it and then the animators animate to your voice or because it, yeah. it, it always baffles me it really does well the the thing with with the lego side of this amazing franchise is that is that it has to be it has to be something for the whole family. It 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 you can't you know you can't have blood and gore. There's certain rules there, and it also has to be funny. Mm. So the script was there, but of course we had all this amazing footage to work with, and then th those brilliant minds at TT Games got to and at Lego got to work their magic on it, and then we would go in and we would you know we would say the lines, and um. And then what happens is that after we've done our work, then they animate. And then we might get brought back in if they've changed the timings, if they've changed the tone, if maybe what I did when, you know, I'm, let's say, let's say Darth Vader says to Luke that, you know, that, that he is his father. Well, um, maybe that was a little bit too scary. Let's, let's try a version that won't make children start crying while they're playing this game so there's all these little intricate things that you have to do to 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 um make magic mm. and um uh, so yeah that's i don't go in i don't go in and and um and lip sync to the performance of the animated character that's not the way it is it's the other way around and how glamorous is being a voice actor no, uh, it's, only, it's it's only because there is yeah. there is a picture here. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! 
so I mean, let me tell you a little story. <clears throat> I was working on a project, and they had um, a binaural microphone, which is it is shaped like a head, and it has lots and lots of tiny mics all the way around it. And you can move around that head, and if you you can go and whisper in the ear of that microphone, and what will happen is that when you wear um, headphones, it will, it will sound like I am whispering into, into that ear. The problem with that microphone is that sometimes it picks up extra things, including trousers that don't, aren't made of natural fibers. So we tried it and I was standing really, really still and I'd be doing, you know, I'd be acting my heart out and it would just pick up a little and I was, I'm not even moving. And they went, oh, okay, well, this is going to be problematic. Maybe we should, we should just not do it with, with, uh, with this microphone. And I went, I have an idea. Would you mind if I took my trousers off? And they looked at each other as if I had said something absolutely horrific, but also smart. And they went, that's fine. And we, we let the runners know just in case they came in runners sorry they're they're people who come in with with coffee and tea and, and scripts and all that kind of stuff like there is a half naked man in the booth don't be alarmed <laughs> um everybody took it really really well and then because once again narcissism light david menken decides that he has to take a photo <laughs> so made them come in and take a shot of me uh in my pants <laughs> do you know what and i was just thinking that the sound sound engineer was just playing a game and, and you know yep. let's see how 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 much we can get let's see how here. far we can push him yeah yep, absolutely it, no, it's the yeah. t-shirt it's got to go <laughs> <laughs> it's just and it's just you with headphones just, on absolutely and... pink white and pasty in the room <laughs> that's what they wanted that's what they got so apart apart from that you know is there a glamorous side of being a voice actor? Because you see, you know, these actors going to premieres and they get given all these gift bags and, and crew gifts and everything like that. I mean, what's the plus sides of being, you know, a voice actor? Uh, the plus side is getting to work with amazing people. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, fine. I've been, as a voice actor, I've been on two red carpets. Um and no one's cared who I was. Um, you know, uh, actually one was blue. The Ron's Gone Wrong premiere had a blue carpet. But um, it is not about the glamour. It's not, that's one of the amazing things of it. It's just people. Mm. And, um, and we are, we feel very, very much like one cog in the machine. Um, therefore, you know, the, the animators are much more important than us. The script writers are much more important than us. And yes, we do still, we, we do still get to be the people who get interviewed on podcasts like these and, mm. and uh, you know, in newspapers and stuff, but, um, glamor, I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't call it that. I would just say that it's, it is, it's just, it's just the best. It's just so much fun. Oh, I can't believe it. I got to go to Comic-Con. That's what I that's what I got to do. I got to be the guy who sits on the panel at Comic-Con. That's glamour. That's amazing. As a as a sci-fi buff, as a as an as a cartoon fan, me having a photo of myself with the Comic-Con logo behind it. And you know, I got to go to WonderCon, I got to go to other other cons around the world, but I got to go on a I got to go on a yacht with Stan Lee. Oh, that is awesome. So that is it. what the yeah. hell? I can't believe. Uh, yeah, that's the glamour. I mean, no one knew who the hell I was. <laughs> and I don't care. I was there. I got snacks. There you go. There you go. And and the great thing is, talking about conventions, is that, that it will be lov lovely to see you at the conventions in the UK. Uh, you, you know, there are quite a few. There's Wales Comic Con, Monopoly events, uh, show mas masters that do them in London, uh, as well as, um, well, all over the place, Wales. And, will you come and, and hold my and, hand? And of course I will. I will sit with Excellent. you. 
Uh, we can you. chinwag and um, yeah, we can chat because I normally get press pre press passes to go anyway, and um, yeah, I really enjoy them. I really do, and I think it's quite nice for for you to connect with with your fans uh, because, yeah. especially now, Star Wars has got such a massive fan base. You know, it's just fantastic. It's just must 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 be incredible. So, have you got a career plan? in place or is it a case of you just playing things by ear or do you want to achieve a certain you know status i am super lucky because because it, like you know people talk about their five-year plan and their 10-year plan when you're an actor you you're not in control of getting the job there's mm -hmm. nothing that you can do there's no there's no diploma that you can that you can take there's no extra um university courses you just have to be available for be seen for and then do the jobs and then hopefully do them well so that so that people will want to hear more from you and um so therefore m me getting a chance to work with with the top tier of actors um and understanding why they are at the top Mm. tick um me getting to work on a legacy project like thunderbirds that was a tick the working on new animation where i had seen the graphic novels and then um and then got to be part a small part of hilda which is a great show on netflix uh, that's won all the awards um stuff like that they sort of surpass the five year and the 10 year plan because because I get to do something fun and interesting all the time. And my thing is that I just have to, as, as people start to know who I am, it's not just a chance of, not just the thing where I have to say, where I can say yes to every single project. I have to trust that the people that work with me make sure that i make that i get the right that i take the right project and that's the thing that i think is important for people doing my job find the right people to work with so mm -hmm. you know i have um i have the most amazing voice agents that's uh, jane and uh, jane and nicola at calypso voices then i have the most amazing team at cam for my acting and that's bex and imogen and then i have uh, Derek at Cool Waters Productions who handles my appearances and it's you know I've got this amazing team and the thing is that if any of them worry about something that the other has to deal with they can contact each other as well mm. that's what you want that's the that's the 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 I didn't realize that that that's the plan you should have have the right people to work with mm. Mm. yeah and and I suppose being the nicest person you can be as well i suppose uh, like 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 you absolutely you mentioned earlier on because you know you hear too many horror stories of actors um just being complete divas um and just being horrible to work with and look at their careers um so what's been yeah. your proudest moment to date in your career um well the thing is that <sighs> oh man i have so many it's the there's when you get so like when you there's there's a, a feeling that you get when you get the job mm -hmm. and the only way that i can explain it is that all you do is you sit very still and then you sweat because because it's just overwhelming you're you don't know how to handle it because you're not you haven't done the job yet you've just been offered the job so it means that you were good enough so suddenly suddenly all the no's that we get on a regular basis they sort of just get wiped away for for a few moments and um getting getting the the nod that i got to play luke up there getting the nod that i got to work with tom hanks up there that kind of stuff then it's working with amazing directors where they see what you've done so they they'll they'll go i noticed that good job mm um and you know i mean working with with directors like stephen frears they'll never tell good job tell you good job um they'll just 
grunt and nod at you and then you feel like they've you know they've they've carried you around the room um but and then it's the thing of meeting meeting fans meeting people who like the work that you've done or feel that you have done a good interpretation of something that they love mm. or that that you have been a part of creating love for a franchise or a movie or um a series that kind of stuff is is um amazing too so i got to say there's quite a few i think I, I think i did four specifics there um I hope that doesn't sound like a cop out, but no. I, I mean, I mean, you've got so many things to be proud of, and yeah, you know, being Luke Sky Skywalker in the latest Star Star Wars game, I, I just think's fantastic, and that must be such a head rush for you. You know, the fact that it's, that you were forever going to be, you know, Luke Skywalker uh, in the Skywalker. No saga, one can take which, that away from me. They cannot. So, what's next for you? What is next? Is it a case of you putting your feet up, enjoying the, you know, the feedback, or are you the type of person that you've got to always be working, always be doing something? I call myself a lucky workaholic. Um, I have, so I have stuff that I'm working on now. Um, so I'm I'm on a a show for a major streamer that's coming out in a couple of years. Um, I'm got it. Um, I I turn up in the new Sandman um, for Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's coming up. Um, but then there's also work, and unfortunately, with the NDAs and stuff like that, the crazy thing is that I am working on some amazing th things that we will be talking about in a while. I have a feeling, <laughs> uh, but I just I'm not allowed to say it. So I, I just get to sit here with a big smile on my face and go, yeah, there's good stuff happening. <laughs> well, do you know what, David? I would love to have you on the next time you've got something out. Uh, you've been a great guest. <laughs> and Thank and you. I can't wait to see all the things that you're doing in the future. And I can't wait to meet you in person one day at one of these awesome conventions. Um, and lastly, keep safe and, and stay well. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you.